Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So this week, well, this week I'm going to look at two different things. But I thought we'd start off looking at the first thing, and that to do that I'm going to look at some of my older paintings. And you can see one on screen. Um, these, by older paintings, I mean 20, 30 years ago. These are from. I don't have very many paintings from that time, but there's still one or two left. These are all going to be soft pastel paintings. Um, back in those days, I used mainly soft pastels, occasionally acrylic, um, but I was never a huge fan of acrylic painting. So mostly soft pastels. The first point that I sort of wanted to make was if you're getting into art or if you're getting back into art, um, in my case, I'm getting back into art. So I did art for a few years, maybe five years or so when I was young, a long, a long, long time ago. Um, and then I stopped and for at least 20 years or so, I didn't do any art. And it was only a few years ago that I decided to try and get back into doing art again. So if you're in a similar situation or maybe you're getting into art for the first time, I think this first point might be of some interest or some use. So there's lots of these days, there's lots and lots of YouTube videos, books, blogs, all online courses, all kinds of things that you can use to get started or to get back into art. And those are OK. Um, some of them are very good. The problem with them is that sometimes people will do this course or watch this tutorial, maybe read that blog post and they're jumping around and maybe very quickly you're going to realize that art is not a rule based um, thing. Everybody has their own ideas. Everybody's doing it their own way. There's some overlap, of course, but if you follow this person and you listen to what they say and then you go and listen to someone else, you might find that there's some difference and they're putting different emphasis and they may even be contradicting each other. It's because art, it's not like arithmetic. Um, three plus four does not equal five. Uh, there's only one correct answer. Art isn't like that, in my opinion anyway. Art is a lot more amorphous than that. So there is room for lots of different ideas and these different ideas can all be successful. The problem is when you're getting started, if you try and mix all of these ideas, you may end up getting confused. You may end up feeling that you're not making progress. It's better to stick. This is the main point. It's better to stick with one person, maybe one artist that you like. It could be somebody from the present day. It could be somebody from the past or one art movement. In my case, it was Impressionism. And maybe you can see it in this painting, maybe not, I don't know. Um, but I was trying to recreate a sort of Impressionist look. And I was trying to do it with soft pastels. Now you don't have to stick with that one approach forever. Um, and we'll see how mine has changed in a minute or two. But it is, I think, good at the beginning just to have some sort of focus and some sort of um, direction, well-defined direction to go in, at least for the first six months, maybe the first year or so. It doesn't have to be Impressionism, of course. It could be many different things. Uh, three more, the one on the left, the one on the right. Those were painted a long time ago when I lived in Japan. One in the middle was from more recent times, but in all cases, mostly I was either going out and painting in real life sort of thing, or I was painting from imagination and memory. And finally, the one on the left is the oldest painting that I have that still exists. It's not the first painting I ever did, but it's the only one I have from way, way back. And again, I think it's somewhat impressionistic and certainly I'm using a lot of aerial perspective to try and create a feeling of depth in the painting. 
the one on the right, so the one on the left, at least 30 years old. The one on the right is from last week. So it shows how, again, they're both in soft pastel. The one on the right mixes in a bit of charcoal as well. But it shows how things have changed. Um, I still love Impressionism, but I've moved towards uh, experimenting with minimalism. And how little can I do to the paper to turn it into a landscape, that sort of thing. Something that interests me. So to sum up, the main idea when you're getting started, getting back into art, getting into art for the first time, pick something, pick an artist that you like or an art movement that you like and try to emulate or recreate that sort of style. Read up on it, um, find out more about why they were doing it that way, things like that. You don't have to stick with that. After six months, a year, maybe you decide you want to try something else. And that's what I did. Um, I moved from sort of impressionist style to a more sort of minimalist style. And I might move back, I might move on to something else, but the point is you can change after a while. But it's good to have that first sort of six months, 12 months, sticking with one style and and making a bit of progress and feeling as though you're making some progress maybe. The next part of the video, going to look at another idea that I wanted to talk about. And also you're going to see me painting, drawing, whatever way you want to think of it, the image on the right. Okay, so to create this image, uh, this little painting, again, slash drawing, whatever way you want to think of it, I'm using some, start off with some charcoal, and this is Derwin XL block charcoal. It's just a large-ish block of compressed charcoal. I use that with some tissue paper, just to smudge things, create different marks on the paper. The paper itself is Strathmore paper. It's a drawing paper. Um, it's not designed for either charcoal or soft pastels, but it's fine as long as you don't try to build up too many layers. And it's a grey toned paper. I'm also going to use some soft pastels and you can see some of them in boxes around the side of the, uh, the edge of the screen. And I say this painting, this style is, there's still a little bit of impressionist ideas in there, but it's also moved on to sort of minimalist ideas. So the other thing I want to talk about, in addition to that idea of, you know, when you're getting started, pick an artist or an art movement that you like and, and try to learn as much as you can from that one style before you try and move on to something else. The second point was, it comes from something I read a few days ago. So I try to upload on a sort of daily-ish schedule, some recent drawings and paintings to Patreon. And anybody can look at them. There's, they're not behind any paywall or anything like that. There's a link in the description box below if anybody's interested. You can sign up for free and you'll just get an email when I actually post something there. I don't post every day, but that's the goal is to try and post something every day. Anyway, on that on Monday, I wrote that I'd read an article and in that article, the guy was talking about painting landscapes and how you should, the, the proper way to paint landscapes. And, and his idea was that you should paint to please as many people as possible. Your painting style should be very accessible, very mainstream, um, nothing too weird. And as many people as possible should like your painting style. Now, I think his target audience, this was from a blog post, his target audience was maybe people who are trying to make money from their art, um, selling their art, things like that. But I wrote on the Patreon post that I couldn't disagree more. And I can't. It's, it goes completely against what I believe. Now, I'm not saying the guy's wrong. You know, what he's writing is perfectly valid and people may believe it or not believe it. As I say, art is not, it 
it's not like arithmetic. There's no one correct answer to any any problem. Uh, we all have our different ideas about art. To me, art is about the individual. That, to me, is the definition of art. It's you or me exploring our own creativity and trying to create something artistic from that. So really, if you follow through the logic of that, the only person you're trying to please, if you're trying to please anybody, it's yourself. Uh, you're making art for yourself, not for other people. And I think making art for other people, if that's your main goal, um, it might cause problems further down the line. Uh, at some point, you might feel that everything you're doing is a little bit fake because you're just trying to please other people and that's a very difficult thing to do um, people can be very fickle so i think it's better to to focus on what you're interested in what you want to do and create your own art and not worry if other people like it or don't like it as i've said before i think if you make art there's always going to be somebody out there that will like your art uh, no matter how off the mainstream you are you will find somebody who likes your art um, so I wouldn't worry about those sort of things and I wouldn't my advice would be different from that other guy's I can't remember the guy's name but paint for yourself and don't try to please other people and I think that way you'll make better progress um, as an artist. Anyway, those were the two points that I sort of wanted to try and make in this video. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching and listening and hopefully see you again in next week's video.